Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Okami. Last time, we met with Queen Himiko in the Imperial Palace in Seon City, and we learned that there is a way to take control of the Water Dragon, and indeed, that is what we must do in order to proceed on our quest. First things first, there's this demon gate out here on Ryoshima Coast that I never actually took out, and I'd like to take care of it now because I really don't know what it's for, and I think this is probably the only really convenient time we're going to get to uh, take it out. Alright, are you time? I don't remember. No, you're Power Slash. Yeah, alright. See, I'm remembering, I'm getting better. Alright, once that guy's ice goes down, we can take him out. I don't remember what this guy's floral finisher is. I think it's Inferno? So we're going to have to try that out, since we did get Fire Burst recently. Is this going to work? Not if it doesn't take. Come on. Yeah, that is it. Nice. Two Demon Fangs. That's really good. Alrighty. Now that that is knocked out, what are we going to get for this? Because I actually don't know. It is... Is this a mermaid fountain? This might actually be a mermaid fountain, which is surprising, although not of much use to us. Yeah, it is. Wow. Anyway, right over here is what we are interested in. As you can see, this is the border, as Himiko mentioned. What is it, pup? You want to cross the border? You'll have to speak to my colleague if you do. But Queen Himiko's ordered the border to be sealed off. I'm sorry, but I'd give up if I were you, pup. Oh, really? Well, Mr. Colleague. Hmm? Hey, that's a border key. A permit from Queen Himiko for crossing the border. What on earth are you doing with something like that? Rules are rules. Anyone bearing that is allowed to pass here. You must be on some very important business, I suppose. I'll open the gate straight away. And this will indeed open up the border, so we may now cross it. And as you can see, right across the border is northern Ryoshima Coast, a completely new area in the game. Now then, where's this Dragonian Domain? Sounds like something that might be under the sea. But I'd rather not have to get wet if I could help it. And it's not because I'm afraid of that pesky water dragon. It's just, you swim so slow that you practically put me to sleep. Oh, uh, don't say that, Isun. We're not that bad. Bonjour, Amaterasu. I trust you enjoyed your little adventure through that hole. The city's air is sure cleared up thanks to you. Just ignore him and maybe he'll go away. Come on, Ami. Why so grumpy today? Didn't you notice the view? It used to be one big cursed zone out here. But yours truly pulled off one of those great divine interventions. What? I really wanted to wait for you to. But I couldn't stand leaving the sea in such a cursed state. Ah, uh, the sea off Ryoshima coast is back to its beautiful self. Is this what they mean by prettier than a picture, my little friend? What's that supposed to mean, pretty boy? Oh, just a little something I overheard somewhere. So, my little bouncing friend, you're a wandering artist, no? I want to see how beautiful your paintings are. Just one would be fine. Pretty, please? Huh? My art's none of your business. Why should I show you anyway? You really are in a bad mood today. You're not one of those imposters who claims to be an artist, but could not paint a picture if his life depended on it, are you? What? Oh, nothing. It is just something some old man mentioned. His grandson, who was also his apprentice, ran away from home, and he took the old man's painting of a wood sprite with him. Do you think he might claim to have painted that masterpiece? I mean, there are so many unscrupulous people out there. Sometimes it is hard to spot an imposter in the wide world of art. 
But you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? I don't know what the heck you're talking about. Now make like a tree and leave. Or you can stick around if you'd rather get sliced and diced. Excuse-moi, you do not have to get all hot under the collar. It would appear I have struck a raw nerve. Well, since I have no prophecies or anything for you this time, I suppose I'll just be on my merry way. Au revoir, baby. Indeed, we have never actually seen Isun paint anything. But anyway, right here, I believe we're getting introduced to a new enemy. This is an Earth Nose. This is, I believe, the last of the wheel body part enemies that we have yet to fight, and I'm pretty sure you're basically required to use time on this guy. Because when you slow down time, his cloud actually goes away. I have to say, Veil of Mist is like the most useful ability you're going to come across on your adventure. It helps in so many battles. And as you can see, we got no money for that, but we also got three Demon Fangs, which is pretty awesome. Now this right here is really bizarre. You see this staircase right here? You're probably thinking, oh, I just have to use Rejuvenation on it. Just scribble that in there and we'll have a perfectly good staircase, right? No. Yeah, I don't know why, but that right there cannot actually be repaired using Rejuvenation. It's really bizarre. Anyway, right here, there is a stray bead buried right here. Very nice. First of quite a few we're going to be getting in this episode, actually. And right over here, yes, we made it. We have a clover that we can dig up. So let's just bloom that. There we go. And you will notice, there are cats everywhere on this map. I highly recommend bringing lots of fish feed bags with you, because this is where you're going to be using them. Because this is the part of the game where there's going to be a lot of cats and other creatures that will eat these. Mainly cats, though. Anyway, heading right back over here. Uh, almost made it. Alright, just draw a water lily. Right back over here, there is a lot to this map. You see that right there? That's not all that meets the eye. One thing you might notice, though, is there is actually another save mirror on this map. What you want to do is you want to go up to one of these and draw the X symbol on it. And you will notice there is an additional mirror that you can warp to right here. The North Ryoshima Coast Rocky Area. You can only go to this if you have Mist Warp, and you definitely, definitely want to come up here, because in this chest is indeed another Stray Bead. Definitely going to want to grab that one as well. And then if we also dig this up, there are also Clovers, which I believe give you quite a... Okay, I drew the sun. Quite a bit of... What, only ten? Come on, I know there's ones around here that give a ton. Maybe we just can't get to them yet. Ah, oh, well. Come on, I'm not that bad at drawing circles. There we go, sheesh. Alrighty. And now, if we jump all the way down here, this is where we just were. Very neat little stuff. I don't know why it had to go to a loading screen to send us all the way back up there, but oh well, I'll go for it. Anyway, I'd like to speak to the merchant right here. Hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, that's a great idea. That would sell like hotcakes. A donut in the shape of Oni Island. The Doni Nut. It'll be great. Look, you can see Oni Island from here. This is the perfect spot to sell Oni Island merchandise. Gotta make the best of a bad deal, right? Or you wind up miserable. That demon-shaped island appeared out of nowhere a while ago. When the water dragon went crazy and the city got that weird fog. All that's happened since that island turned up. And every day it looks like it's in a different place, too. There can't be a weirder sight anywhere in the world. Oni Island, eh? Bet it's gonna be tough getting over there. And once we get there, I bet we'll wish we never did. I bet we'll wish never did. The more I read the text in this game, the more I notice there are actually quite a few odd typos. 
What are you muttering about? It's time to liven up and do some business. You on shopping duty, Pooch? Then take a look. What is this, America capitalizing on a tragedy like Oni Island? Ah oh, well. Anyway, I'd like to sell more of my treasures right here, and I would also like to buy quite a few fish feed bags. I think I want to buy seven more, so we have a solid 15. That's probably pretty good. Anyway, right here, if you have Digging Champ, you can dig up this clover right here. How much is this going to give? Wait, what did that just spawn? Did that just spawn like a water lily or something? It did. What? Okay. And it's also worth noting, down here in this little river right here, there's actually quite a bit of treasure you want to grab, and some of it's actually quite good. Right here we have an Exorcism Slip M. Is there anything behind me? There is not. There's actually a decent amount of good treasure in this river, and I highly recommend you grab it, just because there's a lot of really good stuff that you just completely miss if you never went in the river right here. Slash this open. Another water lily. This right here is a wooden bear, which you can sell. Very nice. I think the better stuff is more towards the coastline, though. Alright, let's get that one open. Alright, we have a glass beads, which is good. There's a really, really nice item in here that I really want to grab. But, alright, where is it? Is it this chest? Um... Okay, got a mermaid coin, which is pretty useful, although now that you have Mist Warp, it probably isn't as useful. Strange, I could have sworn there was something a lot better that could be found in here, but apparently not. But I'll take it. Anyway, right around here, there is someone that might strike you as a little bit familiar. Right over here, up on top here, we have some cows that we can feed, yeah. Yeah, that's not really what I was referring to, but you definitely want to feed as many animals as you can find, just because praise is a very, very valuable commodity. And I'm also noticing we are really close to 400. In fact, we're probably going to hit that really soon here. Dig this up, and indeed, it is yet another stray bead. Very nice. You can see the, um, the uh, guardian sapling over there that uh, Waka claims to have purified. It's a very interesting idea, and there's also this pond that's yellow for some reason. And here we have Yoichi again! Well, there's a face I know. It's been a while, Poochie. Hey, you're that apple guy who was over by the big drawbridge. We didn't see you in the city. What are you doing here? Well, I've had a complete change of heart since then. I gave up my old job and set off on a journey to hone my skills. This suits me much better than my formal duties back in the city. Nippon's best archer and his bow, Golden Fire, are still in top form. Here, Poochie, why not have a bite to eat and relax a bit? Talk to him again. What, is that some sort of training to hone your skill? You got it. See that fruit hanging on the tree over on that little island? That's what I'm aiming for. I'm going right back to the basics. But that fruit is as, is as hard as stone, yes. Nothing damages it, even if I hit it dead center a hundred times. It sounds strange, but that's what makes it a good target. Here, Poochie, why not have a bite to eat and relax a bit? Interesting. Anyway, what you want to do is, like before, wait for him to fire off a shot, and then draw this water over to the arrow. Not really sure how that empowers it in any meaningful way, considering it really is just water. But there we go, complete with some odd texture glitchingness. What in the world? M my arrow! It just made that fruit ripen! These arrows must be possessed or something. Oh, no! I, I just remembered. I've got to be somewhere. Oh, uh, where was it again? Never mind. Gotta go. Can't be late. And just for the record, I'm not running away. I'm not scared. Well, goodbye, and good luck. And once again, off he goes. Oddly enough, I 
think meeting him right here is actually required, if I'm not mistaken. I might be, but I don't think I am, and it's weird, because the game never tells you to go over here and talk to him, but I think it is required for something a lot later in the game. And why did I just jump backwards? That was weird. Alright, there we go. Now that this is open, we can jump down, and we are going to be in another one of those divine springs, and I believe that is actually the official name of these places. As you can imagine, there is a lot of praise to be gotten right here, and there's also a lot of bunnies, holy cow. Alright, so we'll feed all these guys right off the bat here. And we get 30 praise for feeding all the bunnies, that's crazy. And then of course we can also dig up clover and bloom it. And then there's a couple more clovers in here. Yeah, when you find one of these things, you can expect to get at least 100 praise, but usually more. It's kind of crazy how much praise they give you when you find one of these things. Which is amusing, because they're actually decently common around the world and not too terribly hard to find. Alright, there we go. And of course, in the middle, we have treasure! Here we have a boar statue, which is simply something we can sell. Here... We have yet another golden peach. Man, we're going to be set with these things for the rest of the game. And here we have, I believe, the fourth stray bead we've grabbed in this video. Yeah, already. It's kind of crazy. Alright, is there anything to be found in these pots? I find sometimes these actually spawn feed bags, although not too terribly commonly. It was worth a check, though. And here we are, back on the surface. And I think I'm going to draw the sun here again, just to make sure it doesn't become nighttime, because I love this area in the daytime. It's so pretty. Anyway, right here, it seems we have a demon gate that I missed out the first time on. These right here, I don't believe we fought these yet. They're not going to get a formal introduction, like with a scroll or anything like that. These are called Halo Guardians, and they're basically this area's version of Blue Imps. And like the... Headless Guardian, these guys have a floral finisher of Cherry Bombs. So you're definitely going to want to Cherry Bomb these guys because they give out a couple of Demon Fangs each. And even though we spent a lot of Demon Fangs at the Emperor's Place very recently, you are going to want to get more. This right here is another new enemy, which is surprising. This is an Executioner Guardian, which is this area's version of the Black Imp. And, like most of the other Guardians, Cherry Bomb is the way to go. And wowee, three Demon Fangs for that. We are getting crazy amounts of the things. Although, we are going to be meeting an enemy a little bit later in this video that gives a lot of Demon Fangs if you can manage to correctly pull off its floral finisher, so definitely keep that in mind. And with that, we have a whopping 500 praise, so I think I want to upgrade something. All right, let's do our ink. Bam. We have now fully upgraded our ink. There's no more ink that we can get. We have the full maximum of 10 ink pots, which is awesome. What do you have to say? Oh, hello, doggy. Have you come to see Cat Call Tower? You can hear it from here. That cat crying. It sounds so sad. The tower was bunny. Bunny? Bunny? <laughs> Okay. The tower was built on that island a long time ago. They say there's a huge cat statue at the top. It used to be a real cat before. But after it lived for a really long time, it turned into a god. Then it built the tower to watch over the world from the top. But the tower was so high, the cat got scared and couldn't come down. It was up there for so long that it turned to stone in the end. And it's been alone up there ever since. That's why it cries like that, even now. Isn't that just the saddest story you've ever heard? That is actually pretty important. Look right over there. There is indeed some crazy tall tower over there. That is actually our next destination, because try as you might, looking all around on North Ryoshima Coast, the way forward probably isn't going to appear to you right away. Instead, what you want to do is you want to come right up here to this spot. Hey, Urashima, so you got taken by that Porka guy, right? And he took you to a castle at the bottom of the sea? 
If that's true, where's that Porka now, huh? Yeah, where is he now? Yeah, where is he? What are they talking about? It ain't Porka, it's Orca. He's an emissary of the Dragon Palace. And he only comes for people worthy of going there. Yeah, right. Didn't your mom teach you not to tell lies? Let's get him. Yeah. Get him. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Only cowards gang up on people like that. Hey, who's that? Good timing. I'm bored of playing with him now. Come on, let's go play somewhere else. Yeah. Let's go play. And off they go. What do you think those little brats were talking about, Ami? What did they mean by a castle at the bottom of the sea? Hey kid, how long you plan on staying like that? Hey, I'm talking to you. What's wrong, kid? Hey kid, hello, anyone home? Hmm? I must have dozed off. I reckon I do that a lot on the beach. This right here is Fisherman Urashima. He's actually a pretty important character. I don't know who y'all are, but I sure appreciate your waking me up. When I ain't got the strength to go home, sometimes I nap here. You were sleeping? Bah, you really had us worried hunched over so long like that. You're not sick or injured, are you? No, sir. I'm fit as a fiddle I am. Just taking a nap on the beach is all. Oh. Well, that's a relief. Anyway, what was that about a castle at the bottom of the sea? Would you mind filling us in? No one ever believes me about that. There's a land under the sea here in Ryoshima. The Dragonians and Sea God live there in the Dragon Palace. The Dragon Palace is an amazing place. Real purdy. I haven't been there in a dog's age, though. Dragon Palace? Land of the Dragonians? They're the ones controlling the water dragon. Himiko said so. So, just how does one get down to that palace, Bucket Boy? How could a chubby... Uh, I mean, big-boned lad like you elude that water dragon and make it all the way down to the bottom of the sea? The water dragon was much nicer in those days. But you can't just choose to go to the Dragon Palace, see? Only worthy people can go. If you're worthy, an emissary called Orca comes to get you. So this Orca dude is an emissary from the Dragon Palace. And just how do you get to meet this guy anyway? Now that's one question that ain't so easy to answer. Y'all see that pier over yonder? I see it fine and dandy well. That pier is where I met Orca. I was looking out to the sea when he came with the morning sun. Orca only comes if you're worthy of the Dragon Palace, I reckon. Interesting indeed. We definitely want to get down to that Dragon Palace as soon as possible, so I definitely recommend heading all the way over to that pier, which I totally just completely walked around and missed entirely. Alright, where is it? It's right over this way, yeah. A little bit of a derp on my part. Anyway, hop right up here. And what we want to do is we want to spawn in the sun so it becomes dawn. Something's coming. Why does this big fish look so happy? It's kind of creeping me out. Oh! Orca! Orca! It's you! It's been a dog's age! I stopped counting the years! Did you come to take me back to the Dragon Palace? 
Methinks no on that front. Orca? This is that emissary or whatever of the Dragonians. <laughs> I just let that hold for a bit because I really like this song. At last, one worthy of visiting the Dragon Palace. Hop on, I'll take you to the Dragon Palace. Hear that, Ami? I'm second to none when it comes to swimming. Even that water dragon's no match for me. You heard him. What are we gonna do, Ami? Oh, I guess you already made up your mind. Alrighty, and now that we have done that, we are allowed to hop right on Orca. I said we are allowed to hop right on Orca. There we go. Nope. 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 It's a little finicky, I do have to admit. Come on, Ami. This isn't rocket science, although apparently it is, considering that cutscene. Wait, can you not water Lily here? Oh, no, you can. There we go. Sheesh. This is Orca. Heh. <laughs> not a very creative name. He looks kind of fishy, pun intended. Want to hitch a ride? Oh, yes. You do? Well, I don't suppose we have much of a choice. We might as well take advantage of him now that he's here. I'm second to none when it comes to swimming. That water dragon's no match for me. Hear that, Ami? You believe him? Maybe we should have him take us to the Dragon Palace. I'm afraid I can't do that yet. Huh? You must complete the final ordeal decreed by Otohime. Only then will you be worthy of visiting the Dragon Palace. Hear that, Ami? Hey, Orca, is this Otohime chick your boss or something? She's got a lot of nerve letting that water dragon run amuck. Listen, Orca, we want to ride down to the Dragon Palace. So let's hear about that ordeal you were talking about. The entrance to the Dragon Palace is a whirlpool, but it's hidden right now to keep out the evil beings that plague this area. You must find the whirlpool amid this vast sea. That is the ordeal decreed by Otohime. Hear that, Ami? Sounds like a piece of cake. I mean, this sea is packed with places begging to be explored. We'll just have to check him out till we find that whirlpool. And as you can see, the sea is very vast. Well, what are we waiting for? Full speed ahead, fish breath. And we get that amazing song from Orca's introduction any time we swim with this guy. It's awesome. Anyway, Orca is a bit of a development leftover from this game. He uses a design very similar to a beta design for Amaterasu. Because originally, Ami would transform into a dolphin when swimming, and into an eagle when jumping, and she would fly a little bit, which I think is a really neat little detail. Anyway, the first place we want to go is indeed Catcall Tower. Where's that meowing coming from? Hmm, I think it's coming from that tower. It's kind of creepy, but let's go check it out. Yep, you can probably hear it all around this area, that incessant meowing. Just a warning, you are required, read REQUIRED, to bring a fish feed bag to the top of this tower. Make sure not to forget, because I'm not sure if they'll give you one all the way up there if you manage to mess that up. Anyway, right on up here, there are even more cats for us to feed. Alrighty, how much are they going to give us? I don't remember exactly how much, but I don't think they're too terribly grateful creatures. Yeah, indeed they are not. Alrighty, heading right up here, there's actually a save mirror, but I'm just going to skip that and go right on in, because we are amazing like that. I don't know. Anyway, this is Catcall Tower, and as you can see, it is very tall. Hmm... Sounds like that annoying meow is coming from the top of this tower. Hey, look at those paw prints on the wall. 
Isn't that the mark of catwalk? It's one of the 13 celestial brush techniques. Wait, maybe that means... Gee, it isn't rocket science you soon. Anyhow, right here we are going to get introduced to a new enemy. This right here is a poltergeist. And I have to say... I really, really like fighting this enemy. I mean, it's really annoying to fight, but the rewards you get from it are quite impressive. So what you want to do is you want to wail on this guy as much as you can and cast up wind and time as much as possible. Otherwise, you might have a bit of trouble taking this guy out. You want to be really careful not to deal the killing blow with Power Slash or anything like that, though, because if you do manage to get him all the way down and use wind on him, he will drop a whopping five demon fangs. Yeah, whenever you fight these guys, you really, really, really want to get that floral finisher off on him. Anyway, right here we get the mark of Kabegami, which will allow us to learn how to make use of these catwalk symbols. You want to know how you use them? You mash A. Yep, we have to climb all the way up this tower. Kind of insane. It's a little bit messed up. All you do is like mash A and that's like the easiest way to get up here. And this is honestly a 10 minute trip so I'm probably going to speed this up and play some sort of fitting music. Just make a note before I do, we will be grabbing a stray bead at some point on our way up this tower so make sure to keep your eye out for it. And also these right here, hey hey, what's gotten into you Ami? You trying to get to the top of the tower or something? You're one enthusiastic furball. You can actually stand on these, they're basically checkpoints. But yes, keep an eye out for the animals we're going to be feeding and the stray bead and other treasures we're going to be grabbing. And I'm going to speed up and meet you guys at the top of the tower. And with that, we are all the way at the top. Holy cow. Right up here we have a mermaid coin, which is very useful if you want to teleport away from here, but I really, really don't recommend you do because there is another much more fun way to get down from here. I'm sure you all know what it is. Just make sure not to do it too soon because there is something required up here, as you might imagine. Right here, we have an incense burner, which is a nice thing we can sell quite a bit of treasure on the way up here and I have to say this is probably one of my favorite areas in the game just because you have to imagine just how quiet it is up here all the time this spot I'm sorry but this spot is pure evil we'll be going over it next time anyway heading right out here if the camera could stop freaking out right over this way if we could pan the camera around camera Please don't make me accidentally walk off. We have a cat. All the way at the top. Ami, look. There's a kitty cat over there. Wonder what's it doing all alone up here. It couldn't have climbed all the way up by itself, could it? Surely there couldn't be anything to cat anything to eat all the way up here. Anything to cat all the way up here. Yep. Anyway. What you want to do is you are actually required to feed this animal. But we're going to skip the cutscene anyway. <laughs> oh boy. And with that we get a measly two praise and... It stopped meowing. Huh? constellation here you always sound so surprised you soon but they always tend to show up where you least expect them this is the house god not quite you'll see what i mean
Amaterasu, origin of all that is good and mother to us all. The swirling whirlpool of evil below has driven me to this height. From this perch, I observe the world below and its descent. If my power is needed once again, I, Kabegami, god of walls, shall gladly offer a bridge of hope to the realm below. I gotta say, that's probably my favorite Brush God introductory scene in the game, especially since throughout that entire cutscene, Isun is there with the stars above his head in between them. Hey, I'm not your personal toy to be played with like that. Wait a sec, that must have been Kabegami, one of the 13 gods. You know, the one with the catwalk brush technique. And this kitty right here is a messenger of the gods. And here I thought it was just some stray cat. Whoa, check it out. The statue's starting to glow. Oh, I get it. The Kabegami statue is telling you to use the catwalk power. Ami, put your brush on the statue and draw a line up the wall. That'll let you transfer the god's catwalk power into the wall. Yes, indeed. You've seen these catwalk statues all around Nippon, and, as indicated by the purple smoke, this is what they are for. It almost worked. Still, a rather sad attempt, I must say. Come on, Isun. Catwalk is a technique for climbing walls, right? Well then, don't be so stingy with your lines, okay? Alright, Isun. You gotta draw it a little bit slowly to get the uh, marks to appear close enough, although I'm pretty sure I still could have made that. Yes, yes, yes! Well, you look at that, Ami. The mark of Kabegami has appeared on the path you drew from the, the Kabegami statue, yes. Now you can climb walls anytime you want, simply by summoning the mark of Kabegami just like that. Speaking of which, remember those other Kabegami statues we saw? We should try your new brush technique on them, too. Yes, indeed. And up there is actually something quite important that you're really, really gonna want to grab, so don't leave quite yet. Jump all the way up here. And we have this gigantic cat statue. Kind of crazy. All the way around the back, we have this little bit of a path right here. Toned fall. That would be tragic. Right here, we have a sun fragment. Very nice. And I believe that makes three, correct? Yes, indeed it does. Which means we now have a full row of ten solar units, which is awesome. Anyway, we've done a lot of stuff this episode. We obtained a whopping five stray beads, and we also met Kabegami, the god of walls. So I think we're going to end things off here. Next time on Okami, we are going to be taking a bit of a jump all the way back down to the world below. Hope you're not afraid of heights. So without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Okami.